Yo, what is good, YouTube? Rashawn checking back in with another video. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and drop a like on this video. And the first update of the day, this is a recent training update from Nick Walker. And look at the arms on Nick Walker, man. Nick Walker just constantly seems to be improving and improving. And honestly, I believe that Nick Walker will be a future Mr. Olympia, you know, and he's eyeing definitely at least their top three this year, you know, maybe potentially top four. Now, there has been a lot of arguments going on in my comment section. A lot of people actually are against Nick Walker. You know, they think he's very blocky and they think he won't be able to win a title. Now, I did compare Nick Walker to Branch Warren. I don't believe Nick is as good as Branch yet, but Nick and Branch are definitely very, very similar. As you guys know, Branch will play second to the best J Cutler of all time in 2009. Also, he would beat out the best Dexter Jackson of all time in 2009. So I don't think that Nick's necessarily wired or waist will hold him back too much. I think it is possible just to simply out muscle and out condition, guys. But you guys let me know you guys take on that. Am I crazy for comparing Nick Walker to Branch Warren? Or, But I honestly believe that Nick Walker can be a Mr. Olympia, and I'm pretty sure he would be one of the best ambassadors for the sport. Nick loves bodybuilding, man. And in the next update of the day, this is a recent update from Heidi Chupin. Now, in every update of Heidi, it honestly isn't much to say. You know, Heidi usually stays pretty conditioned. And even if Heidi is 10, 20, 30 pounds above his regular weight, it's honestly very hard to tell because Heidi Chubin is always so conditioned, even in the offseason. So pretty much the only way I can tell if Heidi is growing or not is from the mid-six. You know, how does it look? How deep does he pull his vacuum? But Heidi Chubin is a guy that could come in and win the Mr. Olympia. You know, a lot of times he comes in a little bit off on the first day because he's a little bit small, usually fills up a little bit more in the second day. A lot of people say you can make an argument for Heidi Chupin winning, but I have a very interesting video on Heidi Chupin coming to the channel very, very soon, guys. And in the next update of the day, as I told you guys, if we got better pictures from Toronto, I will share them with you guys. I'm not sure why these pictures came out so late, but this is Mo Shaban, who was actually your winner at this show. And Mo did an interview on RX Muscle where he actually said he's still struggling with, you know, back pain. It's actually hard for him to get very lean because the leaner he gets, the more back pain he is in. But he said he could have possibly had a surgery that would have ended his career, but he said he still has so much to prove. So, man, I hope Shabun is able to, you know, deal with that pain a little bit better because this guy definitely has an incredible physique. But I want to share that with you guys. Now he can shut it down for the Mr. Olympia. In second and third place, Theo Legrarier and Andrea Muzzi definitely look a lot better in these pictures than the ones that we had after the show. But... Theo looks incredible, man. Both of these guys have bright futures, and a lot of people in the industry are really talking down on these guys, you know, saying these shows aren't stacked, there is nobody there. And I mean, how about we appreciate the guys that actually showed up, you know? These guys are showing up, these guys are competing. These guys are keeping the sport going while some of the top guys are waiting until later in the season. So in the next update of the day, these are recent physique updates from Quentin Araya or Quentin Beastwood. Now, Quinn did confirm he will be doing the Texas Pro as well as the Tampa Pro, so that's about eight and nine weeks out. Those shows are going to be back-to-back. -back. Now, I do know in Tampa he will have to go against Akeem Williams, and so far I only know Martin Fitzwater to be competing in Texas. So it's going to be hard for him to be the guy like Akeem, but depending on who's in this show, you know those guys could be your top two, and there will be a very interesting call-out. As I always say, Quentin just needs a little bit more time, you know, a little bit of muscle maturity. And this is him in comparison to some other guys. On the right is Steven Dillashek. And on the left, I believe his name is JT. I can't remember his full name, but he's a classic physique pro, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But Quentin looks incredible next to two other huge guys. Now, the next update of the day, I usually save the 212 updates for the end of the video. But Sean Clarita has won an open show. So Sean Clarita is seen here squatting sixth place on the Smith machine, which is honestly just mind-blowing. Sean Clarita is probably... No more than 230 pounds in the offseason. It's honestly pushing it. Sean could be 215, 220. Sean could even be 210. But I just wanted to share this with you guys because Sean Clarita is moving some serious weight. Now, switching over to Classic Physique, this is the most recent physique update from Marcelo DeAngelis or Horse MD. Let me know in the comment section below right now, what do you guys think about this front relax shot? When you come out there on this stage, this is the first shot the judges are going to see. One of his legs do look slightly bigger than the other one, but they could just be the way that he's posing this. But he's actually only five pounds away from the weight cap at three weeks out. Now, that is if he is able to get that extra inch. 
If he is unable to get that extra inch, he will have to lose somewhere between 12 and 15 pounds within the next three weeks just to qualify for this show. So hopefully he's able to qualify. I'm excited to see this guy on stage, but he's also already very, very conditioned. He already has cross striated quads. So hopefully he gets the extra inch, man, because if he has to suck down even more. It's going to be very, very hard. Now, another guy that we have competing in this show is going to be Gabriel Zancanelli. Both of these guys are Brazilians and incredible athletes. I believe Horse is probably a little bit bigger, but Zancanelli has probably more of that classic look that the judges are looking for. So it's going to be exciting to see these guys stack up on stage if Horse MD can hit that weight cap. Now, the next update of the day, these are recent physique updates from Breon Ainsley. Now, in the thumbnail, I said Breon Ainsley looks incredible. Some of you guys might find that arguable, but as you guys know, Breon has struggled with the size of his legs, having to die down into the classic physique division, also combined with him being over the age of 40. But on the left, his legs actually look very full. Now, Breon Ainsley did say he will be competing in the Tampa Pro prior to this year's Mr. Olympia, but I haven't heard any talks of that in weeks. So I'm not sure if he's still going to do that. But look at the upper body of Breon Ainsley. Arguably the best upper body in the division. Definitely the best back in the division. Look at the arms on this guy, man. Breon Ainsley had some legs. This will arguably won't be the greatest physique of all time, in my personal opinion. Now, you guys can destroy me in the comments for saying that. But in the next update of the day, this is a recent physique update from Lucas Coelho. And he will also be competing in the same show as Horse MD and Gabriel Zancanelli. I believe it is a possibility that he may be competing in the open division. Now, he is a 212 athlete just coming off their win at the Sao Paulo Pro, and he placed 10th at last year's Mr. Olympia in the 212 division. I believe he placed 10th. It could have been 8th. I think it was 8th, and I think Tony Burton was 10th. But anyway, this guy looks incredible, and no one ever really talks about him. Now, the next update of the day, this is the latest from Jeremy Buendia. Now, Jeremy said he actually hopped on a diet. That's why on the right, he looks a bit smaller. I think this is about one week progress. And it's always great to see Jeremy Buendia making progress, man. He also was in a position as Mo Shabon. So hopefully Shabon can come out of that back injury issue because Jeremy could have also had an injury, a uh, surgery that would have ended his career. But he decided to keep pushing, you know, working through it. And eventually he was able to come back to this. So, you know, just great to share Jeremy's story, man. As I told you guys, he was my first coach. So Jeremy claimed he will be coming back to compete in 2023, but either way it goes, I'm just glad to see that Jeremy's in shape. You know, Jeremy is healthy. Now, I thought that these would be interesting to share. Do you guys know who these two guys are? This is Samir Banu and Chris the Technician Aceto. I had no idea that Chris Aceto was a bodybuilder. Now, some of you guys may laugh at that, but I got into the sport in 2020. I just know Chris as being the guy, you know, in the kitchen, looking at you, telling you how to pose. Samir Banu, incredible here, too. May have to do a video on him. But this is another image that was shared by Samir Banu. I wonder, was Chris Aceto actually coaching Samir Banu? I would have to look a little bit deeper into that, because if so, that would be interesting. Chris definitely one of the best coaches in our sport. But just wanted to share these two interesting images with you guys. Now, the last story of the day, I actually meant to share this probably a couple of days ago. You guys should go over to Milo Sarchev YouTube channel. He worked with Jang Sung Yope, who placed second in the 212 division at the New York Pro to Noel Adame. Now, he was giving him some great posing tips. And as you guys know, I'm a big guy on posing. A lot of these guys can make their physique look a lot better just by improving the posing, guys. Trust me. Now, Milo's goes into depth. He's also a very honest guy. Lex Lewis is also in this video giving Jang a lot of tips. And they also went through an entire back day. And Jane will tell Milo soon that he has to slow down with pushing him so hard on the posing because he can barely feel his back, but he's going to try anyway. But you guys have to watch this video, man. Milo's the mind, man. It's just incredible the amount of knowledge this guy has. And he's also brutally honest. You know, he doesn't tell these guys what they want to hear. And that's what Jane said he wants. So as always, I hope you guys did indeed enjoy this video. If you guys didn't notice, I'm having technical mic issues once again. I'll just go ahead and get a new mic, but if you haven't done so already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm Christian from Go Fitness, and I'm out.